Hi, it's hot. And we're back in St. Martin where we can buy parts, right, baby? Yeah, baby. So the last couple of months, our Spectra water maker, the production has gone, been sliding dramatically. Um, we've got a rebuild kit for our Clark pump, and we've just purchased a new feed pump. So we're making a big investment here to maintain this thing and make sure it keeps going. But we're down to making like half a gallon an hour, and it should be making eight. Uh, it's using the same amount of power to do that, so it's time to give it an overhaul. So that's what I got right here. I got a shiny new feed pump. These are about $500. There's our old one. I just got a little bit of plumbing and electrical to swap it out. Then we're gonna test it and see what the difference is. Um, we still have to pull the Clark pump, pump, Clark pump and um, rebuild it. And we have a full kit that came, it was just about $1,000 for that, so. And why wouldn't we just get a different water maker? Well, there's a lot of systems out there that for $2,500, which is a big investment, we could rip all this out and uh, change it out. But Spectre is considered to be one of the leading ones. Um, it's actually uses hardly any power and that part we really like. Um, it's quiet, it's efficient. And really after doing some research and some homework, people were like, keep it. I mean, if this has 1500 hours on it and this is really the first time that it's had some work done on it, it's pretty good. That's, if we can get another 1500 hours out of this, I'd be very happy, so. Uh, I'm gonna get to work and swap everything over, remount the pump. We're gonna fire it up and test it and just see if our pressure comes up, if we could start making more than half a gallon. Um, That'd be fantastic. It would be. It's still a big job to pull the Clark pump out and pull it apart. That's on our to-do list. We're hoping for now we can just swap this, get some water in the tanks, um, and then pull that sucker. So that's the plan for now. We're gonna go for it. Baby, what are we making? We're making eight gallons of water an hour. I <laughs> know, oh, that is awesome. It works. We're still gonna do the Clark pump, but if we don't have to do it right now, I'm totally cool with that. It's ripping it right now. Yep. Our uh, parts per million is still super low. It has been all along, but look at this. Eight. We've never seen eight. Ever. Ever. Actually, it actually popped to 10 when it first switched from the flush from fresh water into making the salt water, it was at 10, and then all of a sudden it went to eight. I didn't even know it could read 10. So that's exciting. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. We are sailing around the backside of St. Martin today for a couple reasons. One is uh, uh, the Heineken Regatta is starting right away. So there's tons of these really cool looking carbon fiber race sailboats coming and going all day. We're gonna go anchor in the bay at Simpson Bay on the other side and the Dutch side. So we can kind of be right in the middle of it all. But the other bonus of that is, is we've got a pretty good system coming through for the next couple days where Mary go on the French side, which we stayed at quite a bit, is going to be really choppy and ugly as you can see by the sea state right now we actually went around in the dinghy earlier this morning to check on the dutch side and it was flat and calm so we decided to move the boat today
We're just cruising into day three of the regatta here and the winds have flipped. So we moved in close to the beach to just get away from the thatch and keep it comfortable for us, which it has been. But man, we're gusting into the 30s and I'm watching all these boats come out this morning and they're prepping for their turn to get into the race. Um, and it's nuts, like this it's gonna be fast. Yesterday's race was really cool. We talked to some of the smaller boats after they came in and they did around the island and they were around four hours, which is nuts, averaging about 13 and a half knots. Six people in a, uh, I don't know, 16 foot boat, it was crazy. It was really cool talking to them and just to hear their uh, experience that they had for the day. Today is gonna be really fast for a lot of these teams and we're sitting here watching them all and they're, uh, they're circling, attacking back, waiting for their turn for their um, class to take off. But man, it's gonna be a fast day. It's pretty cool to watch. We're gonna cruise out there in the dinghy and check it out. I also wanna show you guys this wicked yacht that came in here, and it's just state of the art, weird looking, and it's really pretty, so I'm happy to show you guys that too. The Maltese Falcon was launched in 1990. Today, this 289 foot sailing yacht is still considered one of the most iconic sailing vessels on the ocean. You can charter this vessel for a low, low price of 580,000 US per week. The St. Martin Heineken Regatta is an absolute must experience. Over four days, we witnessed the Caribbean's largest sailing event, combining world-class racing and competition to vibrant, fun-filled nights, keeping with the event's motto of serious fun. With over 20,000 visitors from 37 plus countries, it's a global spectacle. We saw everything from Olympic champions to casual liveaboards, all enjoying tailored races. With the blend of windward, leeward, and coastal cruises, it kept the excitement high. What a thrilling and unforgettable event. I think we've got the best spot for the start of the race. No kidding. <laughs> We're tied up to a dive buoy out in the middle of the bay, close to the start of the race. Just waiting. Not one other boat out here. This is coming to you live. <laughs> From Adventure Dinghy. Yeah. And our little tie up right here. Look at this massive yacht doing a turn right here. After an epic day of watching the competition, it was time to chill out on the beach and soak in some rays with friends. A little rest up before this night's festivities.
Man a broke, man a winner. Still a believer. Put your light in the sky for them. What are you doing down there? Fishing wire, as always. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, uh, our tank sensors don't work and we can't tell when our water tanks are empty and our water pump just keeps on running and we can't hear it. So we came up with an idea of when the water pump turns on, we have a little light that's going to be mounted over here that's going to turn on. So if we see it on for an extended period of time, we know that the tank is empty and it's time to change tanks. Try it out. Turn on the water. See that? That means the pump's running. This is awesome. It's a sweaty day. But we're getting the little jocks checked oh, off, so that's good. We it's just, running uh, in my eyes. I can't see. We just <laughs> ran the um, line so that we can fill our big tank in the front with our water maker. So that got done today. And now we've got our sensor light for our pump. So it's yep. just so quiet that we can't tell when it's running. So this way we won't burn it out. Yeah. yeah. So one of our tanks run empty and then our pump just sits there and runs and runs and runs and runs for hours. Then it's dead. At least this way, if we see the green light on, we know that pump's running because it's mm -hmm. so quiet. Mm -hmm. All right, let's clean this mess up. Getting so much better at that with the new swivel on. Nice. Yeah, it's a lot easier now. Cool. So we have lifted anchor. We're finally leaving St. Martin. And it's time to go to a new island that we haven't been to before. So we are heading to Britain and Anguilla. It's gonna be fun. It is gonna be fun. It's a short sail and we're gonna show you on a map here. It's like two and a half hours, three hours tops, depending on what we're gonna get for wind today. But it's cool, you go over, there's one spot to check in and you can pretty much stay in that bay for free and dinghy around the rest, which, excuse me, we enjoy doing anyway. Or you can pay big bucks and uh, anchor in a different pass. spot. Yeah. So we won't be doing the cruiser pass at this point, I don't think. We're just going to go explore by dinghy as much as we can. We got light winds and good weather this next couple of days. And then after that, we're going to book it to... USVI. Woo! It's been a while since we were there. Yeah, I can't wait. The last time we were there was such a muted trip. If you can remember, our fridge died. Oh, this is all my feel. It's crazy. Okay. Doc, can you, um, yeah, let me ow, it ow, um, if you can just like cur give it a little curve at the end, what? like curve it a little bit, okay, push it, and we had to wait around for parts for that to happen, so we didn't really get to enjoy St. John's as much, this time we're going to get some real time there, and <laughs> Back side of the island, so we had to go around about half the island to get over to here 
and the beaches along the ride over, I was just like, wow, hey, they were amazing. It's so pretty. But the bay that we're in right now is just gorgeous. So let's get legal and have some fun. <laughs> so we had this gong show of a situation trying to get on this really high dock up there where the boats were going right underneath when all we had to do was come a little bit further and it's the perfect dinghy dock. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, so we're on our way, immigration's right in front of us in the blue building and then we're done. Well, that was about the easiest check-in that I think we've done yet. The ladies in the office were absolutely fantastic. We're all good and cleared to go. It was nice. It was, uh, you don't do sail clear here. In essence, SailClear is an online service that allows pleasure craft operators to submit their custom documents prior to arrival in a country. It allows registered users to digitally enter and update any notifications about their vessel, crew, or passengers while sailing through the Caribbean region. All in all, it creates a faster customs clearance process, which means shorter lines and more time to discover these beautiful countries. Not all countries accept SailClear, but it seems that more and more are starting to get on board here they have their own program so that's one thing that uh, you got to get used to you kind of do it anyways with every place that you go to just in case they have it you can give the number but for the most part you're filling out hand copies or different computer things but all in all not too bad not too bad at all well, let's wander down I think we should cruise down the beach and check it out okay yeah let's go a huge thank you to all of our patrons your support really does keep our channel going. And a very special thank you to our newest Leatherback Turtle patrons. Both of you are above and beyond. Thanks so much, Robert and Matthew. You're 100% swa. If you're looking for some more behind the scenes Hanu fun, sign up and join the adventure on our Patreon site. Catch you later.